Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim, supporting traders globally and achieving their financial security and freedom. Also, today's date is February the 9th, 2020, and we've got a watch list of five we're going to talk about, and a couple of them are going to be about the coronavirus, so I want to bring up this little website we're going to have, and I'll have this link posted below in the uh, comment section, and it's going to be the confirmed right now is 37,592 total deaths right now is 814 with a total recovery rate of 2,922 so on today's watch list let me pull this back up here we're going to be talking about APT Lake L-A-K-E Bind B-Y-N-D A-T-V-I and Pinterest Pins P-I-N-S Miss Vegas Yes, so good day everyone and in preparation for the markets tomorrow. So just a quick update on this Corona. I mean, Jim just gave you guys the numbers, but uh, we also can see that um, uh, Princess Cruises did also confirm six new cases on uh, after confirming Sunday, the testing by Japan's health ministry. We also see that uh, China's Hebei says schools are shut until March to help stop the virus according to state media. And also from Yoon on CNBC, uh, mentioning that the number of masks, um, you know, many manufacturers are being told that they cannot resume production until they have enough masks for all the workers at the company. And, you know, some are getting help from local authorities. And unfortunately, other companies are having trouble sourcing the masks. And several of them have private shipments being redirected to Wuhan or other badly affected areas. So this is quite uh, the challenge here. So this is what we're going to talk about, APT, which is Alpha Pro Tech. This is the uh, company that does make the masks. They also make the cover protective apparel. So obviously, they're very involved in the industry. I'm sure their sales, I, I wonder, I'd love to know um, if they even have any of these masks in stock. I mean, the orders must be going through the roof here. Uh, the other thing, too, we know that the stock has previously had a good run. Uh, we see that back on February 3rd, it went all the way to 714 high of day. And then we can also see that, um, you know, the stock had a previous run on January 27, all the way up to 786. So it has pulled back, but the volume was pretty strong on Friday, over 2 million shares. And so we can expect, seeing that the corona situation is still in the news, we can expect to probably see the stock have some sort of continuation this week. Uh, the other thing, too, from the options side on APT, I just want to mention from Chatterflow, um, who's one of our partners, you know, we could see that on APT, there is an option call. So I'm going to just mention it really quick. It's for the $10 strike. So that's really far from the money. And but the expiry date is May the 15. And that option contract right now, uh, at the time that they purchased it was 55 cents. So let me just check very quickly uh, what it's going for right now for the $10 strike. It closed at 50 cents. So each contract's going for $50. And so there was a sweeper that came in and he picked up 500 contracts at uh, $55 each. So he put about $27,000 of premium. So for those of you that trade options, you might want to keep this one and write it down and maybe have a look at it tomorrow and see if there's going to be an opportunity for you to buy this contract, but I certainly wouldn't want to, would not want to buy this when it runs at the high, hopefully take advantage of any pullbacks and maybe consider this for an option trade. Jim, let's hear about the chart on APT, please. Oh yes, APT. And I'm going to make a challenge out there to our listeners, to our audience. If you do have any good coronavirus stocks that you do like, I'd appreciate it if you'd list your favorite one and I'm going to capitalize one, and I'd like to go through them and maybe add them to our next watch list coming up this week. But, yeah, I'd like to make a little challenge out to our listeners. If you have your favorite coronavirus stock that you like to watch, please post it below, and I'll do a review on it. So, And I'll give you my results of where I think the supports and the pivot points are. But here's APT right now. Speaking of, of pivot points... I got a pivot point right around a pivot point channel, right around this low support area right in here, right around the 531. 
And I'm going to go ahead and put that trend line on here. I'm going to be charting this up so you can see how I can try to chart things up. I look for places that are consolidated. So I've got a little channel right here that I'm going to call the pivot point on this 20-day run. Now we do have a low support down here right at 479. I don't want to go any lower than that. And we do have a resistance to break, and that's going to be right up here. Oh, let me see. I can kind of adjust that. I think right in there is a good spot at 611. You see where we hit top there and it pulled back, went to the bottom of that pivot point area, and then bounced on up and had that breakout after that J hook here and decided, nah, I'm going to go down another day and correct. And then she had that bounce. So we got a hard resistance right up here at 735. Now, that 610 is going to be your first resistance level. You know, it's a pretty good little gap up right there between where we closed at at 557. We are at 566 after hours, and it is setting up for an ascending triangle right here. You see you have your lower highs, and you have your resistance level. It's going to be at this 573, so that's what we got to break. If we can break that 573, bottom dollar will go to 610. And then it's going to have a little difficulty there around 610 level, around 616. And if it can break that 616, we can bring this resistance level up a little bit higher. And I'm going to post that right about in here, right around 633 is going to be your second resistance. And then we've got a long up here around 685, sometime maybe into next week for a swing trade. Now, I would almost count this as a swing trade, especially if it pulls back for an entry here at the double bottom, triple bottom down here at 4.79. Uno, dos, tres, if it does pull back there. And it could break the resistance level, like I said, at 5.73 with a long target of up here at 6.85 to 7.35. And we did have a 20-day high, and that resistance level on my calendar is going to be right at 8.48 with a 8.63 high. But I always look at the base of them candles, and this is on an hour chart. So low support, 479 for a triple bottom breakout. If not, it can break this ascending triangle right here. The resistance level at 573 and run it up to 610. You know, it could be a scalping trade, especially if the uh, buyers start to come in. Always remember, watch that tape. Keep an eye on the news and have that level 2 up. And that can tell you exactly which way this stock's moving, if the buyers are coming in or not. So the next one we're going to talk about is going to be just, it's going to be its sister, and it's going to be Lake, L-A-K-E. Yes, so Lake, as we can see here, is another company uh, that does manufacture the mask. And uh, let me just see here. I wanted to see what, you know, they have uh, a very interesting website. I mean, they have obviously... Um, so many different products they have the protection clothing wear rain wear they have fire protective clothing heat protective clothing so they're in the similar line of business as a p t and so add this to your corona watch list because this is another one that's in the same field and believe me they're going to probably get a lot of orders um from you know from china if not already in uh, in play here. So, you know, definitely add this one here. You know, Lakeland has, um, you know, a lot of different products that could be a big help here. And so uh, this company, just so you know, was founded in uh, Ronconcoma, New York in 1982. So keep Lake on your watch list. It's had also a nice run in the past as well. And it is one of the ones that I seem to, out of all the Cremona plays, this is kind of the one that seems to have uh, good action along with the APT. Uh, this also has had previous highs back on January 27th as well. Same time as APT, you know, this one is high as 1628. And we can see here that it closed at 1314. So Jim, what can we see potentially maybe on Lake? It had a nice run, it's now pulled back, but I think we could see a continuation again this week. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. This is one that you also want to watch. We're going to go ahead and pull up the yearly chart just to look at the yearly chart real fast. We are at a yearly high that we broke a couple weeks ago up at 1682. It did have a nice little run. It did bounce off a gap, and that gap resistance level was right around 1120. 
We did break that 200, that 9 crossed over. These are the EMA uh, uh, moving averages, tongue tied. We got the 9, the 34, and the 200. So we did have a golden cross, and she did jump up and break out. So now she did pull back to a low, hit a double bottom, and then bounced off that double bottom. So I'm looking over here at the previous high we had back here at 1289. That's going to be another little support area. Then we've got another spot right up in here, right around the 1376. I'm just trying to draw me some trend lines in here and see where we had this top up in here and where it pulled back. We're going to kind of match that up a little bit. I'm going to go with the base of this candle right here and out there at 1217, which run right into that 34 EMA. These are EMAs, not SMAs. And that's what I've been using here for the past year. I've been trading for 15 years, so I'm pretty, I've probably drawn up over a million charts. I've added it up one day and I said, wow, unbelievable. So we got a long resistance up here right around the 1549. If this gets out of hand and the momentum swift, so, you know, switches over to these mask and protective materials. And we're going to pull up the 20-day now and see if I can find some more supports on a 20-day. So let me look at something real fast here. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and find another resistance right up here at 1701. And we're going to stop right here. There's going to be another one right here at 1638. And I'm going to type something in real fast. Let me see, we got a pullback support at 1216. That's going to be your low support. Your first support is going to be this little channel right in here, right between 1274 and 1289. Resistance to break is going to be this 1321, which is right there. And that's the resistance that we need to break. It's going to be that 1321. If we can break that 1321, we'll go to 1376 and then that 1448. Yeah, there's places in between here that it could stop at. And I see another one right here at that 1416. So this is one you're going to watch. Low support, 1216. See if you can get in on that bottom. But right now, you do have a lower highs. So that does should post a little concern. We just have to see how the momentum turns on the lake. And this is not the kind of uh, one you want to fish out of. This has got masks for the people that are suffering with the coronavirus or in the infected areas. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be BIND, B-Y-N-D. Miss Vegas, can you hear me? Well, yes, I can. All right. Uh, so, you, you know, uh, beyond me, I first want to talk about um, the fact that if you do follow us on StockTwits or Twitter, you would have made money with this call because I posted it in real time to help you guys. And I posted a trade idea and it was for the bind beyond meat option call. And uh, these were a lotto play, meaning that, you know, when we say lotto, it could go to zero, but the risk was very small because the contracts that I purchased uh, and the ones that we were looking to, were looking to buy was the ones for the uh, 120 strike and they were expiring on February 7th, which was Friday. And I posted that trade live on social media and they were going for $45 each. So really, even if you wanted to just try one, because you don't have to buy a lot when it's a lotto play, you just got a position size with what you are comfortable to lose. So if you're comfortable losing 45 bucks, then that's the risk, $45. And you know what? That risk paid big time, over 1,000% gains. The actual option trade went to $540 a contract. That was absolutely insane. And uh, the trade was called because the stock was coiling. And when a stock is looking to coil, you can expect some sort of expansion on the stock. This is really more used with option traders, not necessarily by people that actually trade stocks. Um, really more option traders focus on coiling uh, from what I've seen. Uh, but anyways, uh, we had a really nice run on Beyond Meats. 
And uh, the other thing too is Beyond Meats obviously is also uh, have their product now in France. And they actually um, entered the supermarket deal with the casino group. And the casino group owns the Monoprix, the Franc Prix, the Casino Supermarché, and Géant also. And also they're doing a uh, quick serve with restaurants called Steak and Shake Chains. So, you know, the fact that they're in France is big. And uh, who would have thought that the people in France, uh, Vive la France, would love this kind of product. And you know what? It seems to be a hit. So, and I can tell you that for a fact because I have family in France and they've actually told me the product is sold out in some of these um, supermarkets. So I'm actually telling you something that I know from relatives. Um, anyhow, so Jim, let's hear about the chart because I think Beyond Meats is one to still consider looking at for this week. Uh, the earnings, my understanding is coming up. I don't, I have so many different dates on the earnings. And so to be honest, I've actually emailed investor relations uh, waiting to find out when is the real date because I have three different dates. So in the meantime, we trade the action, trade the chart, and it looks like these um, traders that are out there also trading this from the option side, looks like they're looking at the $140 strike. Yeah. So this is just going to be quite interesting this week if we see some sort of continuation. I'm kind of happy it kind of went back over the 20-day uh, moving average towards the close. So, Jim, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Beyond Meats because I think it's maybe going to have a chance to go beyond maybe 120. Yeah, it was beyond me when I realized that Vegas made a very good call on this Thursday. Um, I, if I would have looked at the chart a little closer, I could have probably seen exactly what she's talking about. She called it a, what you call that again? Coiling. Coiling. And I also see an ascending triangle. So when you got two confirmations like that, I should have realized, but, you know, Vegas is very, she really impressed, she presses me all the time, but she overwhelmed me last Friday when this thing bounced up. We do have a little pivot point area in this channel on a 20-day chart, and I'm going to draw out the ascending triangle that I see, and it's right here. You see where we had these highs here and where it pulled back a couple of times? That's called a pivot point area. That's a place where the stock either is going to break above it or break below it. So I'm going to draw that line right in here, and it's going to proceed with that ascending triangle. And I'm going to draw that ascending triangle right in here. So there's our little spot right there at 114.17 for a pullback for your first support. The triangle comes right here, and I'm going to draw that in. And this is one thing that's special about our room, and there's probably other rooms out there that do the same. But we try to like to help educate when we see chart patterns and stuff like that. And here's what you call would be an ascending triangle breakout. And you can tell right there. What she's seen Thursday, we had the breakout on Friday, so I was quite impressed. We do have a resistance line up here. I'm going to go ahead and draw that in. Every chart tells a story. So you just got to determine what chapters to leave out and what chapters you want to read. So we have another resistance right here at 124.14. This is going to be an earnings play. Keep that in mind. That's why people are starting to get interested in it. It is also the one of the most bearish trades out there along with Tesla. And bears, you know, are still crying and whining about Tesla. And they'll do the same thing with this bind. You know, they just don't like the idea of having fake meat. I was building vegetarian sandwiches back when I was 20 years old, so I appreciate it. So we got another resistance right up here at 128.81. I think this is one of them 10x companies, which it's already proved itself. It's already bounced up from a very low low. If I pull up the one-year chart from the IPO, you can tell it opened up down here at 45 bucks. Let me pull up three-year. I think it's only been out for a year, but yeah, right here at 45 bucks, and we had that big run. So that $45 ran all the way up to 239 That's a good 5x trade right there. And she did has pulled back to correction mode. And this is a worldwide, like Miss Vegas said, France. They're just going to go worldwide, all these sandwiches are, all this fake meat. So we have a low support at 75 You know, I got in this trade a few times and lost money on it down here. And I was kind of getting 
negative about it, and then all of a sudden we had that five-week breakout. She started running up again. So let's pull up the 20-day. I'm bullish on the trade. Don't take me wrong. It's just at that time my sediment was getting pretty negative on it because the bears were whipping up on the bows every time it would try to run up. So we have three support levels. Low support at 104.49. If you see that, that's a double bottom. That'll be a triple bottom buy. We got the pivot point area right here at 114.17. And then we have the resistance levels that we need to break. That's going to be 119.44, 124.18, and 128.81. Now, you know, just watch the trend. Take it your time. Don't rush in the trade unless you see the trend going up. Like you do here this day and this day here. You see that? That's a beautiful trend day. That's a beautiful uptrend day. And then you have your days where the trend goes down. Just follow the trends. Give it time. Don't try to rush into this trade and you can become a very good fake meat trader. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be uh, ATVI. And that was a good call, Miss yes. Vegas, on bind on your, on your option call, too. I was really impressed last week on that call. It, Kind of silenced well, me for a little bit. You know, I was really, I just to close off on that one, you know, I mean, I could see that the move was looking to have a, a nice breakout uh, based on how the moving averages had conjoined together. The thing is that you just never know how big is this breakout going to be. Could it be like $3, 5 bucks? We don't know. But that was a massive, nice, beautiful move there. And because it was, uh, took us right into the money, uh, with those contracts, uh, that was great. And so I do know that there was a few people on stock twits that messaged me and said, thank you so much uh, on that, posting that in real time. Uh, and the thing is that what I try to do is post things in real time for you guys. I don't post it like hours later so that you don't have a chance to trade it. I try to post it in as real time as possible. Sometimes I could be a little bit late, uh, but really not that much late that you're gonna miss out on the entry opportunities. So, you know, if you want to follow us, uh, it's to your, you know, to your advantage, just try to help the community. So now on to um, ATVI, which is Activision Blizzard. You know, this is a gaming stock and they did have great earnings. They did declare 41 cents a share annual dividend, which by the way, is a 10% increase from the prior year. Last time it was 37 cents. Um, the other thing too is that, um, they mentioned as well, you know, they're planning to roll out more what they call remastered and reimagined games this year. They had a lot of success with the return of the beloved series such as Crash, Bandicoot, and Spyro. And uh, the company is definitely going to tap into their portfolio uh, to bring several remastered experiences to the players in 2020. And they will be announcing those a lot closer to the launch date. So you know, the meaning of remastered in the video game industry has evolved. It started out to only include visual upgrades, but some recent projects have rebuilt classic games from scratch and could be viewed more as a remake, similar to the one that they had with Crash Bandicoot and Spyro franchises. So they're calling it, you know, remastered and reimagined, basically to hint that Activision's plans cover different meanings of the term. So... You know, you can keep a watch on the stock if you're looking to trade the stock on a continuation. Uh, from the options perspective, I am seeing some calls for February 21. So we're talking two weeks from now. And they're basically buying some contracts around the 55, which is, uh, you know, in the money, obviously. Then we see some $60 calls. And then we see some contracts uh, further out into March and August for $62.50 and $60. So I will say what I'm seeing with the fat cats, they're kind of liking the August expiry dates. And that's where I'm seeing some uh, decent money flow in terms of premium going into this actual company. So they're waiting for, you know, they're buying the August contracts. So Jim, let's hear about Activision Blizzard. Kind of sounds like a dessert. Oh, uh, it sure does. This company. Sounds like an ice cream dessert. But yep. uh, yeah, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that chart. Well, this is the one I'm going to look at. I don't want to jump right into it, but what I want to do is just kind of analyze it and see how it works, see how it works out if it pulls back or if it wants to break out. We did have a kind of a descending pattern on it on it um, Friday. It did kind of dip down to a low down here of right around the 6041 area, and I can see that being a support level. 
and I'm going to just adjust it just a little bit higher right in there at 6045. You see what I'm talking about where we've touched that up. We had that ascending triangle right here breakout. Then she pulled back for about three or four days pretty hard down to a double bottom down here right around the 5748. And then you, you've got the resistance that it needed to break and there was a couple of them. The first one was right up in here and it didn't get to that the first time and that's right there at 6190. And then you had from that bottom you had a little breakout up here to right around the 6089 area. So we're going to pull up the 20 day chart. I do see a little consolidation here on this. I mean, excuse me, we are on the 20 day chart. Let me pull up the yearly. I want to show you something here also on the year chart. Look at how that nice run on this higher lows all the way throughout the whole year. So this is definitely a bullish trade. Just want to buy on these big candles. You want to try to buy at a support area. And right now our low support is going to be right around that 6045. Maybe another one here just the day before, right around the 59.14. But that is a beautiful chart. So we're going to pull back to the 20 here. Just have one more little look at it. Means I added that trend line. See if I missed anything. I got another support level right in here. Bam, 58.46. Then I've got to find something in here that looks like a Honeywell. And I'm going to put it right there. Right there at 59.78 runs right into that 200 you see where I put that at right there we we could break down below that here a few times and I'm seeing the same kind of response all the way down on the 20 day chart long resistance to break is going to be the 62 oh 62 10 that's where we need to break come and we are I mean you know it's just something that I want to watch Monday I don't want to jump into trade if it does pull back and the momentum's still there and the volume's still there at 6045, I might scalp it on up to somewhere in this resistance level of these two resistances, that, which are now going to become supports at 6089 and 6138. The resistance that we do need to break is going to be right here at 6175. If we can break that 6175, we're going to go to 6190 and 6210. And then we'll try to find these other little resistance levels with a long at 63 bucks. And I'm going to go ahead and put put that right there. So that's ATVI. I'm going to keep it on watch for next week. It's one that I have not watched, but I'm adding it to my watch list. And then we have another one that we just love. It had great earnings. A lot of people have been bearish on this trade. Vegas, we did a video on this a while back. You, you said in a while that this could be another Facebook. Well, the earnings proved it last week. So we're talking about Pinterest pins. Yes. And you know what? I mean, I, the stock has had, you know, quite the pullback from, you know, where it was back, you know, even back in August. But I still think that this company, I mean, this is these pullbacks are a bargain, in my opinion. I mean, you have to understand, you know, Pinterest, uh, the company did post stronger than expected fourth quarter results uh, the other on Thursday. And it helped to build on their very strong year-to-date rally. The stock was up 13% on Friday morning after rising as much as 18.4% earlier in the session. Uh, it definitely looks like the bulls are looking to take some, uh, you know, obviously looks like, you know, they're looking to take on the stock. I mean, we could see that the latest numbers do suggest that there are attempts at business improvements are paying off. And one of the comments mentioned by one of the analysts at Wells Fargo, Brian Fitzgerald, who, by the way, rates the stock at an overweight with a $35 price target, and he's up the price. He did say that, you know, Pinterest is a very strong fourth quarter, and the, um, they did underline the importance of keeping score as Pinterest has gained share of advertiser demand by demonstrating its value to advertisers through improved conversion tracking. Also very encouraged by the company's drop top, um, top line fundamentals. The revenue was up 46% from a year earlier. And also we're seeing improvement in the conversion metrics. And, you know, this is what's really important. I mean, we are seeing the opportunity to monetize a business. I mean, you know, I really think that Pinterest to me will be a future Facebook. I think the monetization will continue uh, some people will say that it will be a slow burn from a dollar perspective, 
giving the requirement to scale the sales on the ground, but the Excel, the investment acceleration here is very helpful. So what I like is that Pinterest is focused on growing in the existing market rather than expanding to new ones. And that is really what one of the analysts also liked about Pinterest. And I like Pinterest because I just find it's almost like an online shop. And I mean, you just go there, you look at pictures, you know, people don't write books and books and books about what they're talking about. They just post a picture, could be a picture of something as simple as a dress, a picture of jewelry, maybe a picture of, um, you know, a house, maybe a kitchen. And it could be a kitchen that someone recently remodeled. And when you actually click the picture, it actually sometimes takes you to the website of potentially the manufacturer that may be sold the um, granite, uh, in terms of jewelry, it could take you to an online store where the person actually bought the product and you're actually, if you like it, you could buy it. So it's very easy on the eyes to just go to Pinterest. If you like what you see, you click the picture, it takes you to the company's website and you may want to become a subscriber. You know, similar to, you know, a lot of stuff that Jim and I do, I mean, we have a Pinterest account, we share our trading information and uh, you know we've had some clients that have come through the website just for a trial just to see what i love stocks is about and some of them have come through pinterest so you know pinterest to me is an opportunity also for companies to advertise their products and hopefully in turn maybe the customer that's on pinterest uh, which is a free website you can go there and you might end up buying something directly from the website so i love how it's taking people to the e-com site the other thing too is companies can also advertise on Pinterest and that's how Pinterest makes their revenue because they're making it from the clients that advertise their products on their website and the only advertising you can do is the picture. So I really like that. I think so far the stock is up 38% so far this year. Um, so I think we should definitely keep watching Pinterest. I don't think it's done. And uh, in terms of options, I am seeing a lot of option calls going into the stock towards the $28 strike around March. And I'm also seeing some $35 calls in August and also for next year, $35. So that's kind of where they're heading um, in terms of the option flow. So Jim, let's hear about Pinterest because I really love this pin. Yeah, this is one that, this is our, our link right here. You can also get to our website from it or you can go to the website and find the link to our Pinterest account. If you do have one, just go ahead and hit that follow button. So we're looking at the, uh, oh shoot, where am I thinking here? It threw me off here. We, I'm gonna pull up this yearly chart. We did have a yearly high of 36.83 and she had a pretty hard sell off at the end of uh, 2019 and then at the beginning of 2020, we started the bounce up we really started previous previously before that but actually it was right around the first is really when she started taking off and we had an ascending triangle as everybody knows this is one of my favorite patterns for a breakout should have kept a closer eye on this but i did call this stock out down here and took a trade or two on it down here and just kind of wrote it off and so we're back up here we, we're back up here to the we broke out of the pivot point which is actually a pretty good pivot point on the yearly chart of 2517. That's going to be your solid support. We do have a little gap down in here that we have to be concerned with. If it starts to break below that, it can pull back and hit that 200 EMA at the 2388 level. I got a $24 target on it, alert set to where, you know, I might raise this up a little bit after we get done with the video and bring it up to about 2410 so it can alert me before we hit that target of $24. That's going to be your low support that I want to hold. Solid buy is going to be right around the 23, which is the top of that ascending triangle. The resistance is that we do need to break. It can move a lot higher, as you can tell. We got a long resistance on this right around the 29 area, and that's where I'm going to kind of set my eyes for my target. As though we just heard from Vegas, they have a $30 price target on it. So let's pull up the 20-day and have a look at the 20-day real fast and see if that tells me anything different. Yeah, see, you know, 
the big spike up off earnings and it did pull back and consolidate now i guarantee there's probably a few people that are stuck in this trade and there's a few people that took their profit on this gap up which i would have done no doubt if i was in this trade i would have got out of it first thing at first chance i could have but you see it didn't give you much of a chance once that bell opened it pulled right back to that 25 dollars support and kind of held there and bounced up create a little resistance up there so we're going to draw a resistance line right here at 2589 I might adjust that a little bit higher excuse me let me take that off you got to get precise when you're doing this and a lot of times when I try to be precise I'll magnify it up and I'll go right in there you see that little resistance level right there at 29 2591 and then there's a couple others on the way up but that's the one we need to try to touch at 2591 and your low support is going to be your first one's going to be right down here maybe off the 34 but let's look at the daily one minute and see if I see anything different on it we are below the 200 moving average which shows a little bit of bullish bearishness if we can get these two moving averages to move up above that 25 I mean that 200 you could have another breakout up here to resistance levels and I'm going to add another resistance level right there and I'm going to add another resistance level somewhere in this area right in here. I'm going to stick with that. I could have probably went down a little bit lower. So yeah, let's do let's do that. Let's bring it down a little bit lower. Right there. I like that. Because it still touches my, my, my boundaries. You see what I'm talking about? And then we had that up here and it pulled on back. So low support, 24 bucks for a solid buy maybe 23 for a strong buy resistance to break is going to be this 2546 if we can break that we're going to go ahead and move up pretty good jump up there 2591 and there is another spot right here we could hit that too at that 2572 area that'll consolidate you see where we've had a couple touches down right there so that's another resistance level and you're long what i say 29 bucks on the swing trade that depends if the momentum picks up now remember you know the coronavirus is the only catalyst right now to pull this market back and then that is it oh I got one more I want to add Miss Vegas I just want to talk about yeah. Tesla I did a video well, you made a video you did a video so we're not going to talk about it too much no but you I want to go ahead you know what we can do we can include the video in this in our uh, information below yeah because Jim did a really good job, guys, on Tesla, because we know a lot of requests on please mentioning Tesla. And sometimes to take the time to talk about Tesla, maybe some viewers don't want to listen to it, the whole video, when we have other stocks to talk about. So Jim really spent some time this morning making that for you all. So I hope you guys can see that video as well and like it and comment, because he did a great job on that. But yeah. certainly comment. Go ahead, Jim. But I'm just, that's what I was wanted to say, more or less what she said. I'm going to post it, and I didn't think about that. She's always the smartest one of the bunch, and I don't think I can ever beat that. <laughs> that's why she's the boss. But, yeah, yeah. I want to go ahead I'm and just bossy. post. Remember that guy said I'm bossy. Yeah. So if you're interested <laughs> in Tesla, there are going to be a link supplied. So always make sure you subscribe and ring that bell, too, so you can get them updates. And I will we'll be doing more videos just on Tesla alone. And I might start doing some on bind too, because I uh, those are the two bearish bullish trades of the year for me. Those two I'm going to be pretty strong watching every day to try to find entries and exits and follow the trend. They're very trendy right now. They either trend down or they trend up, and then you can they're easy to spot when the sell off starts to occur. So I'm going to be doing posting videos maybe on both of them coming up. And that's it for the aftermarket report uh today's date also remember just subscribe and ring that bell and today's date is february the 9th 2020 and we'll have a great week next week i love stocks